Hello friends, welcome to Connected. Once again, we meet here to connect with friends from all over the world. My name is Fabiana Espinosa and I will be guiding you through today's journey from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. I hope you had a great week and find yourself ready and open to enjoy what the weekend brings to you, whether it's time off or some work. I want to thank you for taking the time to connect with me. Remember that you don't only see us through the Abbey Ayala channel, but also through our signal on Facebook, Twitter, and later when the show is finished, on our channel on YouTube. marked advances towards gender equality and women empowerment, especially during the last century, progress has been slow and disparities persist around the world. Unfortunately, science is not immune to such inequalities, with women representing only a third of researchers globally and often facing gender-based discrimination and a lack of equal opportunities. Here on Connected, I refuse to speak about the negative side of the situation. On the other hand, I like to spread, to show and to support amazing women that contribute to our beautiful world from whatever field they are in. Today, I celebrate women researchers. My guest is a Bolivian woman, biochemist researcher that currently works in one of the most prestigious hospitals in the US and the world, the Johns Hopkins Hospital. Her name is Daniela Villegas. She will connect with us from Baltimore, Maryland in the US. Before we dive into Daniela's experiences, let's meet her. Daniela was born in Oruro, Bolivia. Although most of her life she lived in La Paz City, where she got her high school diploma. After finishing high school, she moved to Cochabamba to attend college, where she earned her bachelor's degree in the field of biochemistry. She worked in Bolivia as a pharmacist right before she moved to the U.S. with her husband. They lived in Utah for almost one year, and then they decided to move to Maryland, where they currently live. To this date, Daniela has been living in the U.S. for almost 11 years. She started working at the Johns Hopkins Hospital in 2013. She worked as a laboratory technologist for four years and then she decided it was time to try something new and apply for a research specialist position at the Johns Hopkins University, where she has been working for almost two years. She has some family in the US, Canada and Mexico, but most of her family lives in Bolivia. Daniela tries to go back and visit Bolivia as much as she can because she misses the people and the culture a great deal. Currently, she lives in Baltimore. She is married and they have a four-month-old baby and two dogs. She strongly believes that when you work hard and do what you love, you can achieve anything you put your mind on. It is my pleasure today to introduce Daniela Villegas. Daniela is talking to us all the way from Baltimore in the US. Daniela, thank you for taking the time to spend with us and for actually be, being here and telling us about your story. You are very welcome on the show. Let's go ahead with the first question. And tell us, how did you realize that your profession uh, was going to be related to the medical area? Did you have any influences? Um, yes, hi, um, Bobby, thank you for doing this interview. Um, uh, I am very happy to be here um, doing this with you. Um, well, related to my profession, Yes, it's actually, um, it's more like personal thing. Um, my mom had a very long disease and along the way I actually um, got to meet a lot of wonderful people, nurses and doctors and, you know, lab professionals that actually work to help her, um, you know, feel better and uh, who did all they could to 
to, you know, um, give her a better quality of life while she was um, in the hospital or while she was suffering of this disease. So that actually inspired me. I, I, I thought, you know what, I want to be um, somebody that actually, you know, get one day to help somebody like, like my mom, somebody like me, somebody that, you know, have a disease and it's um, ill and it's suffering and, you know, just do anything I can to help. So, so that was actually my influence. Yes, that, that was it. Right. And uh, so you uh, work as a biochemistry, correct? That is that is your field on the like, say, on the biggest uh, area, like medical area, your field, it's biochemistry, correct? So tell us, how was your experience studying it and getting the skills? Because I don't know how many years it take, but I do know that you started in Bolivia and now you were in the US. Tell us, how was your experience? But um, it's it's hard. Let me tell you that um, uh, the education that we receive in Bolivia and college level is actually very it's good. It's, it's very high quality. Um, especially, I went to um, a public university, and you know there there's so many people that want to obtain the degree, and it's so really cheap. <laughs> that there's a lot of people and there's a lot of competence um so you really have to work hard to get it um so it was hard it was challenging but at the same time it was very rewarding it was great because I, I just love what i um what i do i love what i was studying and i love to learn about all this you know the the human body the organism the cells all the tissues the organs and systems in the body they're just fascinating so because of that i had you know the um instant uh, the incentive to actually work hard to get it um but then there was another issue when i came here to the u.s um, I tried to start working using the credentials that I obtained in Bolivia and they actually don't take, I mean, they don't validate it that easy here, at least not in my field. So I had to go back to school for a couple of years. And so I had to relearn, relearn everything that I already learned over there, but in a different language. So it was actually very, very challenging. But at the same time, science is always changing and, you know, there's so many new things every day, maybe, that, I mean, you never stop learning. So it was actually a great thing to do to, you know, learn again what I've learned in Bolivia, but also gain some more knowledge about things that are done here and uh, obviously the technology and the way things are here. Um, I found a, a little bit more advanced and, and I, I was able to learn that as well that from all of the medical specialties you chose laboratory investigation so please tell us a little bit what is exactly what laboratory investigation is in charge to do and why did you choose it well um actually the, the field of biochemistry is it's very you know it's it's big um right now i'm doing research but before i was i was working on a, a clinical lab and usually what you do in a clinical lab is, um, you know, when you when you feel that you're not feeling well and you go to the doctor and they order for some blood test or, or any other t um, uh, a kind of test or, or exam, you can um, go get your blood drawn and then some of the um, analysis that is performed to your blood is gonna give the, um, the physician, uh, the doctor is going to give them a good idea of, you know, what could be happening in your organism and why you're not actually feeling well. Where I work, when I, where I'm working now is a research lab and what we do is, it's different, it's just creating or gaining more knowledge about certain topics. Uh, nothing in research is actually, you know, for sure is, is not I mean, it's it's a world that's always changing. Uh, one day you have an idea of, you know, a hypothesis, but the next day you're proven wrong and you have to start all over again. Or you have to, you know, um, change the way you're doing certain experiments to to get the results you're expecting or you want to create. 
Right, I can imagine the endless possibilities of answers and maybe we even have are carrying diseases that we don't even know them yet. So it's, it's big, it's big. So, okay. So, all right, you started in Bolivia, you went to the US, and now you're working at the John Hopkins Hospital, which is very well known in the world. So tell me, how is this experience then? Well, it's, um, working in Just Hopkins has been, it's just wonderful, you know? I mean, um, not only because, as you well said, it's, it's one of the best places in the world is and in terms of you know um science in terms of research in terms of technology knowledge it's amazing i've learned a lot and and i continue learning and you know it's it's just great um another part that i love about um hawkins is their their you know the diversity culture that they have i mean you walk in the um hospital and it's it is as if you were working you were walking in a, at the airport. You see people from all kinds of, you know, sizes, shapes, forms, colors, nationalities. It's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. Because, um, you know, today in our society, we're, we're being judged of the color of our skin, um, our height, our um, accent, you yeah. know, the place where we're coming from, the culture, everything. And finding a place where you are actually welcome, uh, with our regard of you know all these things that are so superficial, but they see you as for who you are. It's it's actually refreshing. It's, it's beautiful. It's a really nice thing. And they don't do it all only with uh, patients because obviously they have patients from all over the world. Right. But. Um, they do it also with their with the people that work there. Like I had colleagues um, from you name it, it's <laughs> all you know everywhere in the in the world, and it's great. It's it's a uh, it's very diverse. Um, now professionally, it's been amazing. Uh, I mean the the techno technology that they have there. I've actually worked with with. Um, some of the uh, doctors that actually wrote some of the books that I would use in school to That's study, so you know, great. I mean, that is amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> it's uh, it's great. It's great, and they and they're all you know very willing to to share their knowledge, which is great. Um, I, I just keep learning. It's it's been amazing. It's, it's really it's a it's a great place to work in. I can, I bet. And uh, okay, so let's get a little more real because I know that you recently became a mom, which congratulations for that. And then you also have a husband, right, life, but also you have this work that is not only, I assuming is not only showing up and doing it there, like you have to probably have keep reading, go to classes, or you probably have to give. How? give classes or I don't know what's your experience in the experience there as like having not both lives but having this kind of job this profession on your life well it's it's great and it, it's hard to handle you know like you said uh, there's a husband and there's a baby and uh, and all the, the the work that you do but I, I think when you do um, what you love it's, it's actually it that makes things uh, a lot better and a lot easier. Um, I was able to actually give a, um, a presentation on um, at Hopkins at, at a symposium, like you were mentioning, giving the, uh, the classes and, and all that. And and I love it. I mean, it's it's all part of the same thing, but it's 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 different also. You know, this is the thing I found several opportunities here. Um, I'm hoping that I just took. I mean, one day I'm taking classes, another day I'm just standing there and giving class. I mean, talking to people <laughs> about what I know, um, and and it's just amazing. I mean, I found the opportunity and I take it. I take yeah. it because I mean, you know, sometimes um, like that's in this interview. I'm I'm a little shy, really, but then I I think you know what. I do it. I, I, and, and a lot of things when I was asked to give that, um, 
that talk and and that's symposium about um it was it was about drawing samples and and the quality of samples that are to be sent to a lab so when i was asked to do that i was so nervous you had to give this to students and other doctors and everybody <laughs> i can yeah imagine. and other professionals i mean i would just ask because this topic was important and it was related to the lab and i actually I actually um, took a class of, you know, how to collect samples and I worked. I um, One of my first jobs here in the U.S. was actually collecting blood samples. So oh. that's I, how I actually started that. And, and for a while I was doing that uh, and at the same time I was going to school. So I've learned that part and, and that's a very important part of our um, lab because if, if you have a good quality sample, then you have uh, a better option to give a more accurate result to the patient. So it's all, you know, it's all linked, it's, it's all related. Right. So, so one of my colleagues asked me, you know what, they're, they're, they're looking to um, bring to the symposium, a, a, you know, a topic like this, you want to do it. And I'm thinking, oh my God, this is crazy. I'm just gonna stand in front of people and I, again, here comes, you know, the words that sometimes, you know, it's, it's hard to speak. I mean, you think in Spanish and then in the moment to translate, yes. you know, so many things that are happening is so definitely, hard. And, uh, definitely, definitely. And so I'm thinking that's gonna happen in front of people that, you know, uh, I don't know, work in the hospital and, but you know what, again, I said, why not? I'll take it. Uh, and I'll take any opportunity that this just life throws at me. Um, right. I'll take it. You know what, and thank God you do, because I think you are a warrior. You will go there, you do it. You know how many people get stopped on their profession because they say, oh, I can't get my degree validated there, so I'm not going, or I'm not doing, or I'm not, you know, life is hard. and. It's not always, we are not always strong enough to say I'm going to try it or I'm going to do it. So you are, I am so proud of you and I am happy that we are here doing this. We're going to go to a cut really fast and when we come back, last question for you. People at home, stay connected. We'll be right back. Welcome back, connected people. Thank you for remaining connected. Today we are speaking with Daniela Villegas, who is in Baltimore in the US. She is a biochemist. Moreover, she's also a mother, she's a woman, and she's also a wife, but she held a job at the John Hopkins Hospital, well-known hospital in the whole world. So she is today sharing with us a little bit of her path. Daniela, thank you again for being here and connected. And we have a last question for you. So since you do you work now on the laboratory research, you told me that you've been working, uh, research, researching about Lyme disease. So please, anything you can share with us and tell us about. Go ahead. Sure. Um, well, the, the work that we're doing now related to Lyme disease is trying to understand a little bit more about the disease, a little bit more about how the immune response um, works. Uh, this is an, um, a disease that's transmitted by, by a tick, and it's very, um, very common here in Baltimore. Um, it is um, a disease that is uh, transmitted actually by a tick, but it's a bacterial disease. So um, some of the issues that are happening right now with this, um, with Lyme, is that um, some patients might suffer some of the symptoms after they are actually being treated. So, and some of them will just recover right away, right after treatment, which is very, um, which is actually what is one of the issues that the lab where I work at is trying to, you know, um, investigate or gain more knowledge and experience of. Um, just trying to understand a little bit more the mechanisms of the disease and also the mechanisms of uh, how our body, our immune defense uh, re responds to it. Uh, all this in order to gain more knowledge about, you know, diagnosis and better treatment for this patient. So tell us a little bit about the symptoms and how do this, is it a, a disease, how does it progress? 
Like, let's say if you have a bad case of Lyme disease, what happens to the person? Um, but the, it's, it's very interesting. I mean, the, the, when a person has uh, Lyme disease um, in an acute state, um, usually it's not always, but sometimes it originates by a, um, a rash, and there's a rash around where the um, tick was um, located in the body. Mm-hmm. And then that way, um, the person can actually get to be seen, you know, uh, at a clinic uh, or at a hospital, and that's how the patients get to um, get to um, look for some um, care for that. Um, but the problem becomes when I mean, you can treat this this disease as you would treat, you know, other bacterial disease. The problem is that some people will just recover from it but some people will remain having the symptoms and so um so the problem is that um some people uh with acute um lyme disease actually don't even present any symptoms and it's really hard to diagnose before um or just with you know, with you know the rash sometimes a rash that is very typical from lyme sometimes even that rash um, will not be present or some of the symptoms will, will not be just clear or can be confused with any, any other, you know, um, uh, like an infection or any other um, inflammation kind of symptoms. So what we're trying to do is to find uh, better diagnostic methods because even the diagnosis here right now, it's, it's a little bit, um, it's not as accurate as it should be. Um, so that's one thing. And another thing is, like I said before, some people is treated um, for Lyme and some of them will recover, but some people will just carry those neurological symptoms or those problems with um, joints and things like that. And they um, and, and there has to be some kind of difference, um, differentiation between, you know, the patients that actually recover after treatment yeah. uh, with the ones that actually one that they they will be treated they probably the infection is gone but the 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 problems remain for life sometimes and oh. so that leads to a very poor quality of life for this patient so the idea is now to gain knowledge like i said before about you know the um the mechanisms of the disease and also uh to gain knowledge about better ways to diagnose this disease and better ways to treat it, maybe, or if it's if it's find uh, if it's diagnosed earlier, maybe the chances of treating it are better. Um, you know, so like I said before, um, with researches like that, I mean, you 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 try to gain the more knowledge that you can, and then um, at one point, you know, just gather all the knowledge that you might have with other people that's also studying the same um, conditions and see um, uh, see the way to you know find better outcomes for the patients right. that suffer this disease right and then just a little last question because i'm curious how big is your group do you have a team that work um like researching lyme disease we do, yes. Um, it's it's a um, big group. I mean, it's it's a lab that was actually um, that has actually about ten years uh, working in in um, you know research in Lyme, but also this is more the approach is actually more like a um, not just by one group, but also you, we, when we process the samples for, uh, uh, that we receive in the lab, we separate the blood in different components, cells, serum, plasma, you know, all different components. Uh, we obtain DNA, RNA, and all these components can be studied actually at different labs. So oh. sometimes we send the samples and some other people that, that's working in diff- other different technologies uh, will analyze them and give back that information to us and and we do our part also it's, it's not just a work that is done by one group only 
but it's actually something that um, has to be worked, you know, like with a, within a bigger scope. Right, it's a team effort. Daniela, I love to hear because be for people like you and for all your co people like all of your colleagues, we are able to help people when they are like facing life on this challenging type of diseases. I want to thank you for your dedication. I want to thank you for also the time that you took to spend with us. I will leave you a little space so you can say hello to the audience. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, thank you, Fabian. Uh, also, um, it was really great to be here um, in your, um, and doing this interview. I appreciate that you actually, um, you know, take this time to talk, talk to people that outside. It's, it's great, actually, to hear from, from um, people there in Bolivia doing, like you, you know, just trying to reach out and keep us connected, like you're... Uh, <laughs> As Logan says, it's, it's very important. It's very, very important. So um, thank you for this space. Um, yeah, so it's been great to be here. Daniela, thank you and continue to research and find and help people because that's what really uh, special people and powerful people and very smart people do. And I am here applauding a bit kiss for you, to your family, and until next time with me. Thank you again. Yeah. Thank bye. you. Thank you, fam. Take care. Bye-bye. It is so important to have people that care for others in our society. Or people like Daniela that have learned in an amazing way to project her pain and suffering from the experience with her mom's medical situation. She decided to become a part of the group of people that actually help others from a medical perspective. Whatever is your call, listen to it and make it happen at any cost. As I always recommend to take care of your feelings and thoughts, I also recommend to take care of your physical body. As Daniela said, whatever situation caught at an early stage has more chances to be treated successfully. I will see you again in seven days. If you would like to nominate anyone to be interviewed on the show, please write me. My email address is conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. I'll be glad to connect with you. Until next time with me, goodbye.